Welcome to another lesson in Tech with Timothy. Today, we will learn how to import digital files into iTunes and learn a little bit about the infrastructure of the iTunes folder in Windows. So before we venture into actually commencing the import process, I would like to give you a brief overview of how the iTunes folder is laid out. It is crucial that we know how this folder is laid out so that when it's time to do the imports, you'll know where to go to actually collect the pieces. I'm now going to press the keystroke Windows E, which will launch File Explorer. This PC, items view multi-select list box, folders expanded, not selected 3D objects, one of 13. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is press the letter M, as in mic, to move us to the music folder. M, music, five of 13. And we'll press enter here. Enter, items view list box. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Items view multi-select list box, not selected all of us, one of 15. And now we're in a list of files and folders of various things I've imported from CDs through third-party services. Um, and there may be a few other knickknacks in here as well. But what we want to find is the iTunes folder. I'm going to press the letter I to get to that. I, iTunes, 2 of 15. There it is. Press enter. Enter. Open. Items view list box. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Items view multi-select list box. Not selected album artwork. One of... So the iTunes folder is the central nucleus of where all of the files that control iTunes are located except for the program files, of course. Those are in the program files directories, as most programs are in Windows. But all of the components that are used to make the interface look the way it does when we open up iTunes are stored here. The album artwork folder, as its name suggests, is where most of the graphics are stored from albums you download or import from CDs. In the case of most CDs you import, Apple is able to gather the artwork over the internet and download it from the Gracenote database. With Apple Music, artwork is downloaded once you download an album. And you can also turn on a checkbox to have it automatically download the artwork, which, if I'm not mistaken, I believe is actually turned on by default, so that you just never have to worry about whether the artwork is downloaded or not. Contrary to albums, the artwork is actually very small file sizes. It's usually just a couple of photographs and probably not more than a couple of megs for a single album, if that. So you shouldn't have to worry, even if you're on a slow internet connection, about it taking a long time to process the album artwork for anything you download or add to your iTunes library. The next file in the list is iTunes Media, 2 of 5. And this is a file that we're actually going to go into in a moment, but let's keep down arrowing. iTunes Library Extras. It, 3 of 5. iTunes Library Extras. ITDB. This is a database file. Um, ITDB stands for iTunes Database. And obviously, uh, this is one of the files that helps keep iTunes running. We don't need to mess with that. Let's go down. iTunes Library Genius. It, four of five. iTunes Library Genius. Again, this is an iTunes database file. We'll keep going. iTunes Library.itl, five of five. iTunes Library.itl, which of course stands for iTunes Library. And that's all we got. So most of the stuff in here you won't need to mess with because a lot of it is just files that help keep iTunes running the way it should. And um, those are the files that are used to more or less save your library so that it always looks the same at each time you open it from where you last left off. So I'm going to press the letter I to jump back up to the iTunes Media folder. I, iTunes Media, 2 of 5. And I'll press Enter here. Enter. Items view list box. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Items view multi-select list box. Not selected automatically add to iTunes. Okay, the auto automatically add to iTunes folder is a pretty self-explanatory folder. Um, there's not really anything in there we need to bother with. If you had any Apple Music 
albums. Let's say you're subscribed to Apple Music. I did a video on this earlier on how to um, subscribe to Apple Music and all the bells and whistles you can do with that. And if you decided to download Apple Music songs to your computer, uh, there would actually be a folder called Apple Music. Uh, and because of the folders being alphabetical, it would actually be the top one. As for what I have done with my library, I decided, at least on my computers, in order to keep my purchased content separate from Apple Music content, that I would only allow purchased content to live on my computer, and anything from the Apple Music catalog will remain in the cloud on their servers only. And that way, if I was to turn the iTunes view to show only downloaded songs, then everything that's downloaded would be purchased and I could draw a nice distinguishing mark between purchased and borrowed content. Let's go down. Music, two of four. All right, so now the music folder is where all of your music tracks that you import from CDs, purchase in the iTunes store, or import digitally have to, be, have to go and be located. Tones, three of tones. That's pretty self-explanatory. If you ever purchased any ringtones, that's where they would live. Um, in my case, enter tones items. View I actually have a few um, homemade tones in here. I like the old-fashioned T-Mobile jingle that they used to have for the flip phones back in the day, and I think they even put it on some Androids um, in the early years. And it was almost like a symphonic version of the T-Mobile jingle. A lot, a lot more grand than just the piano one that they use today on TV commercials. And I wanted to get that back on my iPhone. And so through a very laborious process, I was able to custom create a ringtone and I saved a copy of it here so that I could easily pop it onto my phone. I'm gonna backspace to go back to the iTunes media folder. Items view multi-select list box, tones, three, and we'll scroll down. Voice memos. For so voice memos. If you connect your phone to the computer to sync your voice memos instead of having them store in the cloud, um, or even if you do store them in the cloud and just want to create a second hard copy backup just in case, uh, any time you connect your phone to the computer and tell it to sync voice memos, they will always go to that directory. And if the directory doesn't exist, iTunes will automatically create it. And that's all we have. So I'm going to press M to go back to the music folder. M, music, to enter, shell folder view, items view, multi-select list box, not selected, 101 strings, one of 363. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Yeah. And by the way, that's th that. So now there's 363 folders in here, but those 363 folders don't necessarily uh, mean that I have 363 artists. I actually have more than that because there is a folder in here called compilations. So, but to put it in a nutshell, all the folders located in this iTunes media, iTunes forward slash iTunes media forward slash music folder are located. Uh, these are all, all these folders are named after the artist. So if we scroll down, we'll hear some artist names. A.W. Tozer, 2. Abby Simon Leonard Slack in St. Louis, 3. of Adventures in Odyssey, 4. Alberto Elysio London Festival Orchestra, 5. Aldo Zaccato Bergen Philharmonic Orchies, Alfred Brendel, 7 of 360. And the reason it's talking like that is because some of these, um, when iTunes creates some of these folders, it doesn't always allow us to see the full name of the file folder when we're browsing through it in File Explorer. I'm not sure of what the logic is behind that. Maybe somebody can post something in the comments and explain why that's the case. Uh, but suffice it to say, if you are looking at these albums by these artists in iTunes, JAWS will read you the full-blown name of the artist, even though it's not shown here in File Explorer. If I press the letter C, C, Calliope, 56 of 363. That'll jump us into the C's, but one nice feature with JAWS is you can actually, or it's not a JAWS thing, it's really more of a Windows thing, you can actually type all the letters of the word that you, of the folder you want to find. So I'm going to just type C-O-M really fast. So M. Compilations, 74 of 363. 
and I had to do a read current line keystroke, which is insert 8 on your numpad. Um, if you don't have a numpad, I believe the keystroke for that would be JAWS key plus I, but I'm not 100% sure because I don't really have a laptop at the moment, and I only have a desktop and an L Braille. So the, I believe the keystroke for that is JAWS key plus I, but I'm not entirely sure. But uh, suffice it to so say, you'll need to use your current line possibly to read to make sure you're in the right spot. I'm going to press enter here. Enter. Shell folder view. Items view multi-select list box. Not selected Christmas at Grace United Methodist CH. One. Now, one thing different about the compilations folder is that it only shows you album titles as the folder names. So, contrary to... So, if you have a specific artist, if you have an album that's all done by John Smith, then you're going to have a John Smith folder located in the music directory. If the album has songs by John Smith and Marty Shaw and Robert Jones and uh, Johnny Cash, I'm just making up random names here. If you have songs by multiple artists on the same album, then iTunes would automatically sort it into the compilations folder uh, if it was imported from a CD or purchased in the iTunes store. So all of the albums within the compilations directory are going to be titled according to their title. The folders are arranged according to album title instead of album artist. So if I arrow down through here. 10,000 voices lived at Cardi Farms Park. 2 of 222. 24th Olderberg Festival Recital, June 14th. 3 of 225 classical dance favorites. 4 of 25 romantic classics. 5, 25 wedding favorites. 33 inspirational memories. Disc 2. 100 best classics. Volume 2 disc 2. 8 of 222. See, those are all album titles, and those are folders. If we go into any one of these folders, we can see the tracks for the album. And this can be helpful so that if there's an album that has a bad track, you have somewhere an idea of where it could be located. Now that we have a general idea of how this is laid out in File Explorer, Let's go to iTunes. I'm going to press Windows D to go to the desktop. Windows D, folder view list view, control panel, four of 28. To move to items, use the arrow keys. To edit the selected item, press F2. And we'll press I for iTunes. I, iTunes, 12 of 28. Enter. iTunes, iTunes, music tree view. To move through or expand items, use the arrow keys. Okay, and I happen to know because it said music tree view that we are sorted according to songs. So I'm going to press Shift F6 to get us to the Albums list view. Shift F6, Library Sidebar Tree View. So that put us on the Library Sidebar Tree View when I pressed F Shift F6. I'm going to use my up arrow to get to Albums. Albums. There we go. And it's a little slow responding with JAWS on this interface, but it um, should work okay for you as long as you can take a little time. Press the F6 key to now to go back to the list view, or table view in this case. F6, table. There we go. So we're on a table now, which means we can use the arrow keys to move up, down, left, or right through albums. If we go left or right, we can move one album at a time. If we go up or down, we can move one row at a time. And I believe there's probably about two or three albums per row. Um, I'm not entirely sure because iTunes doesn't always, iTunes and JAWS don't always get along well and give me that specific information. But let's try going down the, the row and see what we get. Okay, I pushed down arrow. Um, it's not talking to me. I'm going to push right arrow to put it in focus. Table. Abide with me and other Faberite Tims, Marlowe Brass Ensemble, the Choir of St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, and Timothy Byram Wigfield. Abide with me and other Faberite Tims, Marlowe Brass Ensemble, the Choir of St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, and Timothy Byram Wigfield selected. Column 1, row 1. Okay, so it did give us a column and row number there. ACDA Eastern Division Conference 2018 Ithaca College Choir Live VP, Ithaca College Choir and Janet Galvin. But it did not that time. The Dest Fiddles, Christmas Music from Around the World, Judy Loman, Gino Kielico, Louis Kielico, Toronto Children's Chorus, Gene Ashworth Bartle and Toronto Symphony Orchestra. Adoration, Sue Goddard. Advent Music, The Musical Advent Calendar, Various Artists. So I was pushing right arrow each time I did that, and it was not giving us a column number 
anymore. Now if I push up arrow, it took us up I believe, but again it's not talking. So that's where I say iTunes and JAWS don't always get along with each other. But anyway, let's go to an album that I know I have downloaded. Um, and we're actually going to simplify this by pushing Alt V, Victor. And by the way, another thing with iTunes, if you don't have a set of scripts installed that's going to read your menu bar, you're not going to hear anything when you press Alt. It just will say silent. But I happen to know from using iTunes for, goodness, probably almost a decade now, that Alt V will take you to the view menu. Alt V, menu, media kind of submenu. To move through items, press up or down arrow, K. And I'm going to go down to. All music checked, A. Only downloaded music, L. Only downloaded music, or I could have just pressed the letter L to jump on that right away. Enter, S. There we go. And so now it's only showing me my purchased slash downloaded. Leaving content. menus, list box. Now, it automatically jumped us into a list box for one of my albums. That's something iTunes will often do when you change the view settings. So you would have, if you wanted to go back to your albums, you'd have to use either tab, shift tab, or F6, shift F6. The difference between those, by the way, is F6 and shift F6 move through larger increments than tab and shift tab do iTunes, list box, track number, Amaris, not loved, iCloud removed, time 30 hours and 54 minutes, one of 164, to move. Okay, what this has done is actually put me on a voice memo playlist. Um, that could work for this demo, but that's not what I want to use. So I'm going to shift tab. Shift F, shift F6, 164 items, one day, shift F6, unknown genre, shift F6, show action, shift F6, unknown album, shift F6, table. Table, 50 most, unknown album, unknown artist. Unknown album, unknown artist. 50 most loved piano classics, disc three, various artists. That one should work. I'm gonna shift, I'm going to F6 now until we get to the, where it says list box. F6, 50 most F6, show action menu. F6, classical bullet 2005. F6, 17 songs, one hour, two minutes. F6, shuffle button, to act. F6, list box, iTunes, list box, to move to an item, press the arrow keys. And JAWS, again, is not the most helpful because it just says list box. It doesn't tell us what this list box is. Um, but again, I happen to know from experience that this is the track list for the 50 Most Loved Piano Classics Disc 3 album. So I'm going to use my arrow keys to scroll through here. List box, track number one, Brahms, Hungarian Dances for Piano Four Hands, Wo One Number Five in F Number Minor, by Johannes Brahms, Various Artists, Not Loved, Time 210, 1 of 17. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. JAWS is not the most, um, shall we say, talented screen reader for reading classical music albums and track names. It often gets, um, it often reads, reads things incorrectly because of the way we write them, but it's given us enough information here to know that this is the, um, this is the Brahms Hungarian Dances for Piano, and I'm actually reading this on my Braille display. Brahms Hungarian Dances for Piano Four Hands, W O O One, um, uh, number five in F sharp minor. The F, the number sign after the F means sharp, so F sharp minor by Johannes Brahms, and this one is a various artist album, so that means. If it says various artists, then we automatically know it's in the compilations folder. And in iTunes, there is a nice little shortcut. You can access this by going to the context menu as well. But a nice handy keyboard shortcut is the keystroke Control Shift R. And so let's say that there was something wrong with these tracks and we wanted to go get to the bottom of it. Uh, sometimes iTunes causes you to have duplicate tracks and you might want to get to the bottom and figure out, okay, are, are some of these tracks downloaded and some not, or what's going on here, and be able to clean it up. Well, this doesn't work on albums that are not downloaded, but if the track is downloaded, you can press Control shift r and... Control shift r 50 Most Loved Piano Classics Disc 3. Items View Multi-Select List Box. Name Split Button. Now, it put us on the, on the uh, different sorting options 
tab in File Explorer, but if I shift tab. 301 Brahms Hungarian Dances for Pi.Emphora, one of 17. And there are the tracks. Voila. So if you get stuck and need to access these, then that's how you do it. So anytime that you're curious about where the tracks for a specific album are located, just go to that album, F6 or tab till you get to the track listing list box, and then you'll have to press down arrow to make JAWS actually focus in on that list box um, to get you on the first track. But then once you do that, you can press Control Shift R. And by the way, I'm gonna Alt F4 out of this. Alt F4, iTunes. I if I was, if I wanted to know about track 12, list box, out. Track, tra track number eight, track number. Track number 11, WC, Children's Club. Track number 12, WC, Arabesques, L66 on Dante Conmodo by Claude WC, various artists, not loved. Time for 10, 12 of 17. Okay. Now, if I press Control Shift R from here. Control Shift R. 50 most loved piano classics, disc 3. Items view multi select list box. Name split button. 312 WC, Arabesques, L66 and Dot Emphora, 12 WC, Arabesques. So you see what it's done. And by the way, another cool thing with Windows, if you want to hear the whole track name, album, and all, you can read the current line again while on this track. So, and by the way, the reason it says three dash twelve is because this is the three stands for disc three. So this is how iTunes categorizes albums by disc. Sometimes when you import an album, it puts all the tracks for all the discs in one single folder. And so having those special numbers uh, in front of the track number helps identify that this is disc three, track twelve. So that way you can find your tracks more easily. And it also makes for easier processing for iTunes. 312 WC Arabesques, L66 and Dot Emphora, 12 WC Arabesques, L66 on Dante Con Moto, various artists, 50 most loved piano classics, disc 3, 12 of 17. So when I press the current line keystroke there, you heard it read all of the details associated with that track. Now I will press Alt F4 to return us to iTunes. Alt F4, iTunes, iTunes. Lit so that gives you a pretty in-depth look at how your iTunes library is organized using the default settings. There is another option in Preferences called Keep iTunes Library Organized. I usually keep that checkbox unchecked because I've heard a lot of rumors from people saying that that checkbox tends to do more harm than good when you turn it on and it ends up causing things to get even more scrambled. So. Um, I'd rather just keep that checkbox turned off. Uh, viewers, you are welcome to try it and um, tell me if you like it or not in the comments. I'd love to uh, hear some feedback, but based upon the threads I've seen online the past several years, I've heard more dislikes about that checkbox than likes about it. So, but it's nice that iTunes gives you a lot of choice in how you use their software, just like Apple does with anything else. Now, how do we import a music track or even a whole album into iTunes? Well, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have the file folder created based upon whether it's a various artist or multiple artists. And once you do that, you can, depending on whether it's a single track or a full album, you can import it simply by using uh, one of the options on the file menu. To import a single song, you can press Control O to open the file, browse to where you have the file saved. You don't have to put this in the music directory, but um, we're going to get to a part where it will eventually uh, put your finished product within the music directory somewhere. So I'm going to go to the file menu now of Alt F to show you more what I mean. Alt F menu, new sub menu to move through items, press up or down arrow N. So if we go into the new sub menu here, just so you can see what's here. Playlist control plus N P playlist from selection control plus shift plus N smart playlist control playlist folder L genius playlist G playlist control plus N. So new sub that that's not for creating music tracks that is for creating ways of organizing them so you can create a playlist from there you can create a playlist folder 
And to be honest, I've never actually used all of the features in that new menu. I've, I've usually created playlists on my iPhone because it seems to be a little more responsive than my computer. And the music app seems to be a bit simpler to navigate than iTunes for Windows is. If I press the down arrow, Edit rules unavailable. E. Close window control plus W. C. Add file to library. Control plus O. A. Add file to library. So, and it told us you can use the control plus O hotkey to launch that dialog. And once you do that, it's basically like opening a file in any other program, whether it be Word or Adobe. And you simply will browse to wherever you save the file you want to open. Press enter on it and you'll hear that famous tritone that we heard in the last iTunes demonstration where I was importing CDs. It'll do the same thing once the import process is done and then you can view the file. But we're not done yet. The next thing you'll have to do is go to that specific file, right click it, or press the um, application key or Shift F10 depending on your keyboard layout and you're gonna want to scroll down to the option that says create AAC version and the AAC file format is like a balance format it gives you the same or pretty close to the same quality as an uncompressed WAV file but keeps it in a small file size just like your mp3 files are and to be honest, probably only the most astute of musicians would notice the difference because I have file formats from several different things in here. I've got some albums I imported as lossless. I've got some as AAC, that's the majority of the library. And there's a few of them that I downloaded as MP3 and I just thought, well, let's just uh, import the raw MP3 files straight in. But if you wanna create the AAC version, once you do that, it'll actually store a copy of it within the iTunes directory. And depending on how you label it using artist and song and genre information, similar to how I did with those albums I imported on CD, you can still open that dialog even from an album in your library that's already been imported and adjust the album artist, genre, any of that information to suit your liking. And that's something you can only do on iTunes. You can't Oh, access the information dialog on your phone. So you have to do this from a computer. But suffice it to say, you can pretty much, uh, to use the word that luxury car buyers often use, iTunes is definitely a bespoke program. The sky's the limit. You can do, you can organize your music however you like. If I down arrow again, add folder to library, D. We're on the add folder to library. And this basically does the same thing that adding a file to library does. The only difference is, in this case, you select a folder instead of a file. Similar to how if you're in Outlook and you have multiple attachments to save and you want to just save them with one click, you can just select all, go to your application menu and select save. Um, well, actually, you don't even need to select all. You can just go to the menu and select save all attachments from the uh, drop down menu. And from there, you can just browse to the folder where you want them all to save and hit OK and you're done. Escape, escape. So now we're back in the iTunes track list. I'm going to go to the albums list and show you how to access this information dialog. F6, search edit, F6, showing only F6, library F6, table, table, unknown album, unknown artist, unknown album, unknown artist. Advent music, the musical advent. Adoration, Sue Goddard. Okay, there's a good one. Adoration by Sue Goddard. So what I'm going to do is press Control i and we're going to get a pop-up message. Control i iTunes dialog. Are you sure you want to edit information from multiple items? Edit items button. To activate, press spacebar. Are you sure you want to edit information for multiple items? So what this will do is allow us um, a quick shortcut to be able to change information globally for all the tracks on this album. So I'm going to tap to the yes button. Cancel button. Do not ask me again. Check button. Edit items button. To active. Cancel button. Edit items. They have an option for you to disable the checkbox. And if you do decide to disable it and change your mind later, 
then you can go into the iTunes preferences and hit a button that will reset all the warnings to turn everything back on because obviously if you were to check the box of this dialog to have it not show you this warning again then that would be a permanent checkbox and so the only way you could ever make that warning come back is to reset the um, warnings in iTunes so they give you that option space multiple song info to check press spacebar okay I'm not sure why Joss said to check press spacebar because according to my braille display and if I read current line multiple song info there is no checkbox here. So again, that's where I say JAWS and iTunes don't always get along with each other. I'm gonna tab. Multiple song info. Adoration. Sue Goddard. Details button to activate press spacebar. And just as I mentioned on the uh, JAWS video for importing CDs, when you're doing things like this, it can get a little tedious because you can only tab and shift tab through these things. So these dialogues I'll be honest, you're you're probably going to get a little tired in the wrist after a while from constantly tabbing and shift tabbing over and over again. But that's the only way to navigate these dialogues. Art work button to activate press spacebar. Options button to activate press spacebar. Sorting button to act use work and movement checkbox not checked to check press spacebar. Artist. Multiple song info edit. Type in text. Album. Multiple song info edit. Adoration. Type in text. Album artist. Edit. Sue Goddard. Type in composer. Edit. Type in text. Show composer in all views checkbox checked. Grouping. Edit. Button. Edit. Genre. Edit. Classical. Button. Year. Edit. Type in text. Track. Edit. Type in text. Of. Multiple song info edit. Disc number. Edit. One. Of. Edit. Type in text. Compilation. Album is a compilation of songs by various rating. Left. Not love. BPM. Edit. Play count. Multiple. Reset button. Comments. Edit. OK. But cancel button. To activate. Press spacebar. And I'm going to press enter on cancel. Enter. I too. Because I don't want to change anything in this album. This was just for demonstration purposes. But that is pretty much it. So I've kind of given you a brief walkthrough of iTunes on how to use some of the different functionality. In the future, we might put up some videos on how to adjust playback settings like the equalizer, shuffle, repeat, those types of things. And um, again, like I said, JAWS is not going to be the most friendly to you in this program, but if you can if you can get over that, iTunes is still one of the best softwares out there to use for listening to um, music, um, provided you've got a good set of speakers to go along with that. I'm going to Alt F4. Alt F4. Desktop. Folder view list view. iTunes. 12 of tw compilations. To move to an item, press the arrow key. And we'll close the comp the uh, compilations area in File Explorer too. Alt F4. Desktop. Folder view list view. Because I left that open. Meeting controls to move to an. And that is pretty much going to wrap up this Tech with Timothy video. Thank you for watching. Tech with Timothy, your home for accessible tech talk.